Let's get today's action with our market panel. Joining us now is Ben Snyder of Goldman Sachs and Dana Dioria of Investnet. Uh, it's good to have you both here. Ben, welcome to the show. Uh, I do want to talk to you a little bit about what we're seeing in the S&P 500 versus the equal weighted S&P 500, sort of following on what we just discussed with Mike right there. I mean, as we have seen Treasury yields move higher, we have seen mega cap uh, basically hold in there in trading today. But in general, if you look at what's happened since the start of the year, uh, this rally has been broadening out. And we have something like stronger than expected manufacturing data today. Can that continue given signs that maybe the economy is holding in there more than people expected? I think you're exactly right. And I really want to focus on a word you just used in the last segment, which is broadening. I think that is the word to describe what's happened so far this year. Uh, we're seeing the S&P move higher. We're seeing the equal weight S&P move higher. We're even seeing some mid and small caps move higher. And I think the key reason is very simple. It's that growth is solid. You know, coming into this year, there were a lot of concerns about whether we would have a hard landing or soft landing, whether inflation would continue to decline. And I think it's become increasingly clear over the first quarter of this year that the econ economy is running at a healthy rate, that earnings growth is improving, and that's really helped this equity market rally broaden out. Yeah, Dan, I want to get your thoughts on this, especially, and I'm just going to take a step back and ask a really basic, really fundamental question, but I think one that has to be asked, given the fact that we had PCE that, yes, came in line with expectations, but does continue to point to inflation in this last mile being stickier, and then today, ISM manufacturing showing a, a surprise expansion for the past month, uh, and maybe showing signs of stabilization in that sector of the economy, too, and that is... What actually gives the Fed reason to begin cutting rates at some point this year? What's the case for it right now, especially with financial conditions rallying the way they have in Q1? Yeah, I, th I think you're asking the right question here, right? And it, it's been really interesting to watch the market, you know, both see this growth that we're all seeing and, uh, you know, talking about, and then at the same time, you know, continuing to price in as, ready, as many rate cuts as humanly possible, right? So we certainly have come down from where we started the year in terms of the expectation of rate cuts. Uh, but I definitely agree with sort of what I think the spirit of your question is, which is we, we it's asymmetric. It probably leans towards fewer growth or fewer cuts, excuse me, because of the growth, all else equal right now. And you, you pointed out inflation. We're increasingly seeing a view that looks at this super core inflation uh, where we take out, you know, food, energy, housing, et cetera. And that's been even stickier. And that's, you know, taking even longer to cool. So I, I agree. I don't think that there's a reason for the Fed to cut right now. I think the Fed has a lot more to lose by cutting early than they do by, by letting it go a little bit longer. You know, notwithstanding, there are bears certainly who come out and say, hey, the Fed's already too late, you know, for the cuts. <laughs> so, Ben, what's the impact on stocks, particularly smaller caps, you're talking about broadening if we get fewer cuts than some expected. I think that's right. And, and I want to emphasize the idea that getting fewer cuts by itself is not necessarily a bad thing for stocks. In fact, if the Fed is cutting less because growth is stronger than expected, on net, that's probably a good thing for stocks. But it does, to your question, affect rotations and relative strength within the market. And one thing we've seen very clearly recently is that smaller and mid-cap stocks have held back a bit because of concerns of higher for longer interest rates and what that would mean for the cost of capital and for balance sheet leverage. And these smaller companies generally tend to have higher leverage. And so on days where the market has felt more comfortable with the Fed cutting outlook, we've seen this catch up trade, as it were, with smaller and mid cap stocks rallying. Going forward, if it turns out that growth is even stronger than we currently think, and the Fed is going to cut even less than is currently priced, I still think on net that's a good thing for stocks, but it probably means a little bit less strength from the smaller, more levered companies. Okay, so Dana, what do you do with small caps? Actually, I'm, I'm pro small cap. I agree with everything you just heard Ben say. Look, small caps tend to be more interest rate sensitive. Um, they do have to you know, typically go to capital markets more often. So, of course, you know, any kind of movement in rates does impact them. You also think in terms of just the corporate teams at small cap companies versus large cap, you know, it's not necessarily obviously self-funding. And, you know, they're, they're, you now have corporate teams across corporate America, but you think in small caps in particular who are dealing with just rates that they haven't seen in a long, long time, right? So I do think there's more, um, you know, headwinds there. 
but but being in the market is about you know getting into something when it's at a low price. And so if you're in it for any kind of longer haul, right? And by that I mean you know something past you know a year, let's say. I do think small caps are a place to be. I think most investors have a ton of mega cap. No matter what they're invested in, whether they're passive, active, you know, active managers can't afford a lot of tracking error to the big indexes, which have a ton of mega cap. So a little bit of a tilt into small, wait it out, and you'll probably get a better return in the long haul.